In the early hours of a spring day in April 1986, a catastrophic event unfolded that would change the course of history. The number 4 reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat erupted in a devastating explosion. This was not just any malfunction, but a cataclysm that released 30 to 40 times the radiation of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The disaster began innocuously as a test to determine if the steam turbine could generate enough power to keep the emergency feed water pumps running during a loss of external power. As the clock ticked towards the test, the reactor's power unexpectedly dropped to near zero. Operators, under pressure, restarted the reactor with a control rod configuration that was explicitly prohibited. Upon the test's completion, a routine shutdown for maintenance was initiated, but a lethal combination of technical failure, human error, and flawed reactor design led to an uncontrollable power surge. Within moments, the reactor's core overheated, causing a massive steam explosion that tore through the concrete containment building. The In the dead of night, at precisely 1.23 a.m., a seemingly routine test at a nuclear facility spiraled into one of the most catastrophic events in the history of nuclear power. This was not just a failure of technology, but a profound lesson on the dangers lurking when man attempts to harness the atom's heart. The stage was set at Chernobyl, a name now synonymous with nuclear disaster. The test, initially planned to ensure the safety of the reactor during power outages, began with the disconnection of the steam supply to the turbines. This action initiated a rundown of the turbine generator, a crucial part of the test. As the turbine slowed, four of the eight main circulating pumps continued to receive power from the electrical grid, while the other four were supposed to be powered by the kinetic energy of the coasting turbine. Output. As the turbine's momentum waned, so did the power it produced, causing a decrease in the water flow rate through the reactor. This reduction in water flow led to an increased formation of steam voids within the coolant system a dangerous condition in any nuclear reactor due to the potential for a power surge. At 1.23 and 40 seconds, the atmosphere in the control room, though calm, was on the brink of historic calamity. The decision to shut down the reactor, a procedure known as SCRAM, was initiated. This involved pressing the AZ-5 button, which was supposed to rapidly insert control rods into the reactor core, thereby halting the nuclear fission reaction. These rods, typically a safety feature, paradoxically exacerbated the crisis due to a fatal flaw in their design. The control rods were tipped with graphite, which rather than immediately dampening the nuclear reaction, initially displaced neutron-absorbing water and increased the reactivity in the lower part of the core. This design flaw was not just a minor oversight. It had been identified previously during an incident at the Ignalina nuclear power plant but was tragically not rectified in the RBMK reactor design used at Chernobyl. The insertion of these rods took between 18 to 20 seconds, a delay that proved disastrous. As the rods were inserted, the power within the reactor surged rather than subsiding. This increase led to an explosion, releasing massive amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. Following the explosion, steam plumes were visible for days, a stark symbol of the enduring impact of the disaster. The immediate aftermath was devastating, but the long-term effects were even more far-reaching, affecting countless lives in the environment. The Chernobyl disaster serves as a poignant reminder of the risks associated with nuclear power when safety is compromised by flawed design and inadequate response protocols. It underscores the necessity of rigorous safety measures the importance of addressing known design flaws, and the critical need for transparent and prompt communication in the face of nuclear emergencies. Thus, from a test intended to demonstrate safety, Chernobyl became a grim testament to the perils of nuclear energy, a lesson written in the ashes of a tragedy that reshaped how humanity approaches the atomic age. In the dead of night, a routine safety test at a nuclear facility spiraled into catastrophe, the first sign of trouble was a sudden power spike mere seconds after initiating an emergency shutdown or scram of the reactor. As the core temperature soared, the unthinkable happened. Fuel rods began to fracture under the intense heat. The situation quickly escalated. Within three seconds, the reactor's output had climbed to more than 530 megawatts. 
However, this was only the beginning of the crisis. The control rods, designed to halt the nuclear reaction during a scram, jammed, unable to fully insert into the reactor core due to the damaged fuel rods. Unbeknownst to the operators, the reactor was now on the brink of disaster. The power continued to climb, reaching an estimated 30,000 megawatts thermal, 10 times the normal operational output. The instruments failed to capture the full extent of the chaos unfolding within the reactor, leaving only simulations to piece together the next critical moments. As the fuel temperature increased, so too did the steam buildup, leading to a catastrophic rise in steam pressure. This overwhelming pressure was too much for the fuel cladding to withstand, causing it to fail and release radioactive fuel elements into the coolant. This was not just a failure, it was a violent rupture, damaging the channels housing these elements. The compromised structure of the reactor then succumbed to a massive steam explosion, akin to a steam boiler bursting from excessive vapor pressure. This explosion was so powerful that it destroyed the reactor casing and propelled the upper biological shield through the roof of the building. This initial explosion was just the precursor to a more devastating second explosion. Seconds later, a second, more powerful blast occurred, dispersing the already damaged core and halting the nuclear chain reaction. This explosion wreaked even more havoc, compromising the reactor containment vessel and ejecting hot graphite lumps into the air. These graphite pieces, glowing red-hot, caught fire upon exposure to air, spreading radioactive fallout and contaminating the surrounding area. Observers outside the facility witnessed burning debris and sparks shooting skyward, some of which landed on nearby structures, igniting further fires. In the aftermath, as the graphite continued to burn, an airflow through the core fueled the fire, making it virtually impossible to control. The sight that met the eyes of those who ventured outside to gauge the damage was surreal. A haunting, beautiful beam of blue light created by ionized air, reaching up into the night sky. This catastrophic series of events not only resulted in immediate destruction and loss, but also underscored the critical need for advancements in nuclear safety protocols. It highlighted the importance of understanding and preparing for the potential domino effects in nuclear reactor design and emergency response strategies. The lessons learned from this disaster continue to influence nuclear safety standards around the world, ensuring that the balance between energy production and safety remains a top priority in the nuclear power industry. In the complex and often contentious world of nuclear power, understanding the dynamics and risks involved is not just important, it's imperative for our global safety and energy future. Nuclear power stands as one of the most potent sources of clean energy, powering millions of homes and businesses around the world. Yet it comes with its share of risks, as history has shown us through various incidents. One of the most debated topics in nuclear safety is the nature of secondary explosions in nuclear reactors. These secondary events can dramatically escalate a situation, turning a controllable issue into a catastrophic disaster. Take, for instance, the second explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986. Initially, there were several hypotheses about what could have caused this devastating event. One popular theory suggested that the explosion was the result of hydrogen combustion. This hydrogen was believed to have been produced in two potential ways. Either through the steam zirconium reaction, which occurs when the intense heat of a failing reactor causes zirconium cladding of fuel rods to react with steam, or through the interaction of red-hot graphite with steam, which produces not just hydrogen, but also carbon monoxide. However, another intriguing hypothesis emerged from the work of Konstantin Chechorov, who in 1998 proposed that the second explosion was actually a thermal explosion of the reactor itself, According to Chechorov, this was due to the uncontrollable escape of fast neutrons caused by the complete water loss in the reactor core. In simpler terms, the cooling water that normally helps regulate the reactor's temperature was lost, and without this cooling system, the temperature soared uncontrollably. This, combined with an increase in neutron radiation, led to a thermal explosion. Both hypotheses highlight the complex and dangerous nature of nuclear reactor operations, the steam zirconium reaction and the interaction of graphite with steam underline the chemical risks inherent in the materials used within reactors. On the other hand, Chechirov's thermal explosion theory points to the critical importance of reactor cooling systems and the disastrous consequences that can follow their failure. 
Understanding these incidents and hypotheses is not just about adding pages to history books. They play a crucial role in shaping the safety measures and technologies of current and future nuclear reactors. Each hypothesis brings its own lessons about what can go wrong in a nuclear reactor and, consequently, how future designs and emergency protocols need to adapt. In conclusion, the exploration of these hypotheses surrounding the second explosion at a nuclear facility underscores the need for ongoing vigilance, innovative safety measures, and relentless pursuit of understanding the underlying principles of nuclear energy. This is not just about preventing disasters, but also about harnessing one of the most powerful forces harnessed by humanity for a sustainable and energy-rich future. As we continue to rely on nuclear power, let us carry forward the lessons learned from past incidents to foster a safer and more secure energy landscape. Immediate aftermath was apocalyptic. The air filled with radioactive contaminants that would soon spread across Europe. Emergency response teams raced against time. The initial explosion killed two engineers and severely burned others. The fire raged until the 4th of May, necessitating the evacuation of 49,000 residents from Pripyat within 36 hours. The exclusion zone later expanded to a 30-kilometer radius, leading to more evacuations. The human toll was staggering. 237 workers were hospitalized with acute radiation syndrome, and 28 of these brave souls died within three months. Over the following decade, additional deaths were recorded. Some radiation linked, others not. In the wake of the disaster, Pripyat turned into a ghost town. Its residents relocated to the newly constructed city of Slavitich. By December 1986, a massive structure known as the sarcophagus was erected to contain the radiation and protect the wreckage from the elements. This structure was a temporary solution, meant to last only 30 years, necessitating further reinforcement decades later. Reflecting on Chernobyl, the sheer scale of the disaster is sobering. It remains the worst nuclear disaster in history and the costliest. Over 500,000 personnel were involved in the mitigation efforts, costing an estimated 18 billion rubles. The long-term health effects continue to be studied, with predictions of future cancer-related deaths reaching into the thousands. Chernobyl stands as a grim reminder of the potential dangers inherent in nuclear power when combined with human error and inadequate safety measures. It underscores the importance of rigorous safety protocols and the need for constant vigilance in the operation of such powerful technologies. Through the lens of time, the Chernobyl disaster teaches critical lessons about responsibility, preparedness, and the human cost of technological failure. As we remember those who lost their lives and those who bravely fought to contain the disaster, we must commit to ensuring such a tragedy never occurs again. In the shadow of a silent menace, the immediate dangers of radiation loom large, unseen, yet profoundly lethal. Such was the case following a catastrophic reactor explosion, where radiation became an invisible executioner, claiming lives and altering countless others forever. In the immediate aftermath of the explosion, two engineers lost their lives, and another two suffered severe burns. The chaos did not discriminate, hospitalizing 237 workers. Of these, 134 showed signs of acute radiation syndrome, a harrowing testament to the invisible dangers they faced. Among these, 28 would succumb within the first three months, their bodies overwhelmed by radiation's vicious assault. As the community slept, unaware of the disaster unfolding nearby, two fishermen experienced the harsh bite of radiation firsthand, suffering from nausea and intense vomiting after receiving estimated doses of 400 rontgens. Yet fate spared them and they survived. The treatment of the most severe cases of acute radiation syndrome saw international collaboration, with American specialist Robert Peter Gale stepping in. Gale supervised groundbreaking treatment protocols, including bone marrow transplants, though these efforts met with limited success. Despite the grim circumstances, he later addressed misconceptions, clarifying that his patients posed no danger to visitors countering a narrative that had veered away from the truth. The first responders, the station operators and firefighters bore the brunt of the tragedy. Over half of them continued to wear their uniforms, 
soaked with radioactive dust leading to severe beta burns that covered large areas of their skin. In those critical early moments, the beta to gamma energy ratio spiked to 30 to 1, exacerbating their conditions. The extensive burns coupled with the compromised gastrointestinal tract created ripe conditions for bacterial infections, a deadly complication for those battling acute radiation syndrome. The treatment protocols emphasized stringent quarantine measures to shield the affected from further harm and prevent the spread of infections. Many of the surviving firefighters now live with lasting scars, their skin marked by atrophy and spider veins, a constant reminder of the ordeal they endured. As the years rolled on, the long-term impact of the disaster began to unfold. In the decade following the explosion, 14 more individuals, initially hospitalized, passed away due to various causes, with only two related to myelodysplastic syndrome. Despite fears of a significant increase in cancer among the rescue workers, studies coordinated by the Chernobyl Forum found no substantial rise in solid cancers, attributing observed increases in thyroid cancer to more thorough screenings rather than direct radiation effects. This tragic event underscores the pernicious nature of radiation and the imperative of robust safety protocols in nuclear environments. It serves as a stark reminder of the need for immediate and effective response measures following exposure, the importance of international cooperation in managing nuclear disasters and the enduring impact of such events on human health and community well-being. In the realm of nuclear safety, vigilance and preparedness are not just options, they are necessities. In the early morning hours of April 26, 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine experienced a catastrophic explosion. This event not only changed the landscape of nuclear power, but also marked the beginning of a long-term health crisis for thousands of individuals across Eastern Europe. The Chernobyl disaster released large quantities of radioactive iodine into the atmosphere, contaminating vast areas of Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. One of the most heartbreaking consequences of this contamination was the sharp rise in thyroid cancer among children living in these regions. By 2002, around 4,000 new cases were identified, primarily linked to the radioactive exposure from the disaster. Despite the grim diagnosis, the survival rate was remarkably high at approximately 99%, with only 15 terminal cases recorded at the time. While the physical health impacts are well documented, Chernobyl also had profound effects on mental health. The fear of radiation and its potential consequences led to widespread psychosomatic illnesses and post-traumatic stress. Many individuals, influenced by a limited understanding of radiation's effects and driven by fear, suffered from a sense of no control and adopted fatalistic attitudes. This often resulted in harmful behaviors and a reluctance to seek treatment for various diseases, believing them to be caused by radiation. Another interesting observation comes from examining the public announcements of contamination and the subsequent resettlement policies. Whether an area was officially declared contaminated, surprisingly, wasn't the best predictor of general health outcomes. Instead, resettlement status proved more crucial. Those who were evacuated and resettled often reported illnesses related to radiation more frequently than those who stayed behind, raising questions about the efficacy and psychological impact of resettlement strategies. By the year 2000, the number of Ukrainians identifying themselves as radiation sufferers and receiving state benefits had surged to 3.5 million. This designation provided access to state benefits and medical services, creating a strong incentive to be recognized as a sufferer. This, coupled with increased medical vigilance, meant that many benign cases that might have gone unnoticed in the past were now being treated and recorded. The toll on emergency workers was also significant. In Belarus, roughly 0.2% of the 66,000 emergency workers had died by the mid-90s. In Ukraine, a larger workforce saw 5,722 casualties among cleanup workers up to 1995, attributed to a range of causes not directly related to the accident. In conclusion, 
the Chernobyl disaster serves as a stark reminder of the complex interplay between environmental disasters and health. The physical impacts, such as thyroid cancer in children, are deeply intertwined with mental health issues and socio-political factors, illustrating the multifaceted nature of such catastrophes. The aftermath of Chernobyl continues to teach vital lessons about disaster response, medical preparedness, and the psychological impacts of environmental catastrophes.